Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the StarCraft II World Championship Series Europe Challenger Finals. I'm Nathanius, joined by Zombie Grub as we pave our way through another Zerg versus Zerg to find out who the champion of Europe Challenger will be. TBC favorite matchup, right, Zombie Grub? Right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That, that's what I was looking forward to. I mean, with all the, uh, all the talk about Protoss lately, there's really only one way that it could end, so... I'm just glad that we got the solution and the ending that everybody was hoping for. Yeah, Europe's back to being Europe. Nothing but Zergs. Thank God for that. So yeah. we've got a laser going up against Raynor. And I guess one of the interesting things to talk about, both Raynor and Cyril, we've got a lot of games being played today. A lot of games, which means that they have not been looking as invincible mm -hmm. as they previously were, both of them. Yeah. Although I guess we came into this and a bunch of people were like, well, we didn't expect Rainer to be as invincible, but very, a very realistic uh, possibility of him getting knocked out. So let's see what a laser brings to the table. We're loading into new repugnancy to kick off our next semifinal. And here we are loaded in. In the northeast position, we have the red Zerg player. He is a laser. In the bottom left, as the blue Zerg, he is Rainer. Yeah, no, no one looking invincible. Uh, a laser, though, looking amazing in ZVP. He had the yes. most convincing series and a different matchup with perhaps a, a bit of an unlucky little off kilter showtime, sure, but it was still damn impressive with all the last second reactions he had. Pretty much perfect defense if even his macro was a little off or his or his build order didn't work out. We started off today on this map and that DVP and uh, a laser's, well, actually, I started off today, I should say, <laughs> with a laser's Nidus room not really working and he still was able to, to come back. So he's really showing some just, uh, I mean, good reactions, good last second uh, emergency mode, emergency maintenance. And Rainer is a lot about poking holes in that defense finding places that you slip up so that you slip up even bigger later on. And perhaps a laser is going to do better against that style this time around. The last two times these guys have played, uh, a laser did lose both series, but they actually don't play that often. Um, the previous two sets were some years ago, which really? laser was winning. Yeah, the last time they played was like a long time ago? Like no, no, that? no. They Last time they played was like some one of the challengers this year, but I'm saying like if a four series, I think that's spread out over like two years. Or something okay. Like that. okay. Yeah, so yeah, they haven't played a ton then. No. Right. It's interesting to think about because if you go just off of the results, uh, a laser is the most dominant player going into this uh, round of four. And uh, yeah, we saw really, really good decision making, really good engagements too. Was able to force some really good opportunities to get big fights against Showtime in their match earlier today. So a laser should be coming into the series with some confidence. And after the matchup against Marine Lord, cannot say that Rainer is looking, uh, as we said, un untouchable or anything of that sort. So if he drops one or two maps to a laser, I think a laser has what it takes. And I, I mean, like, if he makes, like, the like a slip-up type loss. I think a laser has the ability to outplay him for one or two of these games potentially as well. Mm -hmm. So could be our upset that we are potentially looking for today, although that begs the question, uh, you still still have to win it all, right, in that final match, <laughs> and that's not going to be easy. No, no, it isn't for either one of these players. While Rainer has, you know, made the god bleed, he hasn't actually... Well, I mean, he did, he did literally beat him in winter, so I was, I was thinking yeah. more about last year, but... It's not super consistently, and the last time they played, Cyril definitely got his revenge for that. Yes, he did. So... It will be a tough one, but it will be the same matchup. Getting in that head space. Currently, we have both of them going for the third hatch. Bailey Nest, but Rainer. A lot of pedals yes. and metal on the Zerglings for Rainer. Yep, yep, yep. He will be forcing out more lings from a laser. Wow, laser speed was quite later than I expected, but it is uh, you know going to finish for the fight. It's just that he won't have many lings to defend with. Yeah, Rainer's got his uh, his Bailey Nest about to finish too, and he is he's got well, how many is this? Twenty eight Zerglings. 28 lings going across the map. There is only two banelings basically to defend for a laser. He only has five lings. Oh, that's dead. His one bane does nothing. 
That was uh, that. That's a dead hatchery right there. Yes, that was easy peasy lemon squeezy. Rainer did cut perhaps faster on the drones and say like Cyril, and he did make more lings than say Cyril, who was doing those attacks to Lambo last series, but. Um, still getting such an easy snipe on that third was certainly not what Laser had in you know his plans for this first game. No. It's not necessarily the end of the world as if he could threaten Rainer and keep his drone count low uh, for a little while, but if Rainer just takes his opportunity and, and continues to drone, 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 obviously his droning is going to be more efficient. The third hatchery up and available, and Laser will ultimately fall behind. Yeah, Roach Horn's going to boot up for a laser. And Rainer's just cranking the drones out like we were talking about. Really nice to be able to grab that base snipe. Uh, he already had his own third done. Of course, it's difficult to get the drones onto all of those expansions. Where's that evolution chamber? Oh, it's in the back. I was wondering if a laser's going to go like a Nidus Worm all in, because he doesn't have plus one, but there it is now. He just uh, didn't place his evolution chamber at the front. Nor is Roach Horn. Yep. But perhaps not, neither here nor there. He will have that faster Roach speed as Rainer not actually going up to a lair at all quite yet. Severely delaying that, yet still getting the plus one, so I'm not expecting a, a hatchery based all in. His Ling's actually getting the main and see the exact lair timing. That's pretty nice. Yeah, seeing it the moment it finishes tells you a lot. And he really he immediately starts his own lair back home. But it's plus one attack on the way for both of them. They're both going into Roaches. Roach speed is going to be faster for a laser. That's his big advantage with the lair timing that he went for, since it doesn't appear to be going for any other sort of tech. We do sometimes see if you can get that lair a bit fast, some Zerg players will go for the Spire, but not today. Yeah, it's nope. just going to be Zerglings sharking around the map for both of them. Nothing really big happening just yet, since mm -hmm. once we reach this phase of the game, usually what the Zerg players do is they wait for Roach Speed, then they start to get on the map, try to do some harass, try to get some shenanigans going, um, maybe a little Burrow play. We've seen a lot of the Nidus play. Uh, I was going to say, I'm surprised we haven't seen any Spire play yet. I think we will with, you know, an inevitable potential 17 <laughs> CBZs that we could have. <gasps> uh, but uh, yeah, not, not today so far. But then I saw that a laser had stopped building drones and is just going hard on the roaches. So he is going to time that out with a plus one in the roach speed, go across the map, hope to catch Rainer uh, possibly up in more of the 60, even 65 territory. If he thinks he, uh, it's that type of game, he would be wrong. And he is going to invest in that plus two as well, which will not help for the oncoming battle, but will still take up the resources. Eh, can't laser actually make this work. I... Ooh, he still has to make his way across the map. Now Rainer tough. sees it. Defending against this will be hard. Let's see what he can do. I, it's not uncommon to see Zerg players cancel upgrades in situations like this if they feel pressured to do it. But of course, that means canceling and then starting more units. Got the concave at the top of the ramp. And a laser just going to force his way through on top of the army of Rainer. He does have those Zerglings in the back that are going to be able to come in now. They go for the wraparound on the south portion. The Banelings come up and they are able to get away. But man, really able to get the value out of those Lings from the start of the game, Zombie Grub. Yeah. As the laser starts to chew through the units on the top side. The Queens come over for the transfusions. And of course, the defender's advantage does mean that Rainer is going to be able to pump those units out very quickly try and defend against this attack. And he finally has his own Roach speed, so a little bit more microbility here as he jumps on top of what he was hoping was a lower number of Roaches, but might have misjudged a little bit. But he still has the defender's advantage, which, I mean, a laser's had speed this entire time, but it doesn't seem to be quite enough to work over that advantage. And Rainer, I believe he will hold, and he did not have to cancel his plus two to do so, so That's a laser big. will find himself very far down in that upgrade. Very, very, very big. Most important thing to keep in mind, Zombie Grub, yes, finishing that plus two attack. We talked about the potential of having to cancel it to try and squeeze out the units necessary for defense, but since Rainer did not have to do that, he will find himself feeling very powerful. That plus two is going to really help in a head-to-head -head engagement, and we might see him go for a big counter. He did get some Ravagers as well, so the Corrosive Bile is going to add a, a huge aggressive and defensive potential to his army. Yeah, one problem here, Rainer didn't have the Larva to actually use all of his minerals, so he's trying to bring the Queens forward, trying to make Queens. His plus two isn't quite done, but Laser's Queens coming forward are clearly not helping quite yet. Rainer still has the defender's advantage. Nine more Roaches on the way. Army Supply is getting very, very even 
Laser is no longer ahead in that Roach count. And I think the second follow-up all-in is not going to work. The concave nope. looking so good for Rainer. He's going to take game number one. Laser was all in here. Yeah, nothing he can really do in this situation. Down the upgrade, trying to push up a ramp. Just does not go very well for the attacker. And a laser taps out. Rainer getting the first victory here in our second semifinal for WCS Europe Challenger. Mm -hmm. uh, probably feeling a little, you know, forced to do something like that because of losing that hatchery in the early game, right? That was just, it's simply put, 300 minerals plus the drone that made it, just gone. And yep. for not really very much. Uh, temporary lack of drones from Rainer, which he very quickly replaced because he didn't lose many lings in the attack. And then, while well, Laser didn't fall drastically behind, if he had continued droning, if he had continued his upgrades, he would have been behind, but not by that much. It still is something to really contribute, and he would have been struggling the entire game. So just going for an all-in, hoping that Rainer went up to 66 drones instead, right? Uh, could have been that opportunity because it was an awfully close had, first fight. And he had the much faster lair too. And he has like, well, okay, I'm able to get the Roach speed. So if I can get some momentum going, then the, the speed alone will carry me back to his base. And I can get a lot done in that situation. But Rainer just making a really good hold. It's really hard to call those fights in ZVZ, especially because there's so many units on both sides. <laughs> and it kind of is really, it's like that, oh, one or two here or there. But uh, a laser also having the lings hit from the start yeah. of the game that he brought in to fight, but Rainer had the queens and a yeah. defender's advantage. Yeah, the uh, the lings do complicate things sometimes. Sometimes they look really silly and they just die instantly. And other times they take up a very crucial number of shots. Roaches being kind of like a middle ground between you know the okay DPS. They're yep. not as slow as like actually what would be the slowest attacking unit I can think of. A siege tank, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. um, but either are the fastest, like, in a, like a crackling, right? So lings can contribute a lot, but uh, usually they're better when they wrap around, you know, allow that momentum to carry forward. That's why you see these guys pounce on those roaches and try and get the victory nice and nice and clean because they know defender's advantage will eventually kick in. It was so close to happening for a laser. I really, I liked the idea, but obviously he didn't like losing his third hatchery in the first five minutes. It's very game. much, yeah, it's very much a snowball effect, and a laser does not live up on top of the hill where he can roll that ball very far down <laughs> and get big before he hits Rainer's house. So, wasn't able to do it, and now we load into map number two, Acropolis for this Zerg versus Zerg, trying to take out our WCS winter champion and uh, one of the favorites for today's final brackets. A lot of people. Lots and lots and lot of people like and support our young Italian Zerg player as he has very quickly risen up in the ranks of people's hearts. Yeah. You know, it's, we always point out how young Rainer is, but then we forget how young a laser is. Maybe because he didn't look as young. You know, Rainer <laughs> last fair, year looked a, really, really young. Yeah, as I say, to be fair, a laser, <laughs> just on the fact that he was able to play in every WCS event <laughs> last year, like... <laughs> That's that's true. That's the bar for Rainer, so it, it really exaggerates any difference with anyone else. Yeah, but I believe a laser only recently turned 20 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty young. Well, you're in your 20s. You're, you're reaching the end of your golden pro gaming <laughs> years. You know what they say. Yeah, of course. It's Let's because see. our reflexes get, get you know worse, not because that's we why overwork those... our bodies sitting at a computer 14 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, totally not, totally unrelated. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, I actually think it's a fascinating topic. One that is perhaps uh, a little more like in the in the limelight for some of the the bigger esports, right? You know, you got yeah. you know teams literally hiring, uh, you know, massage therapists and physical therapists and stuff, and getting it people to sense. actually say, hey, it's not good to train 10 hours a day. It's better to train six, yep. and then you know, mental training, something like that. It goes a little bit to, uh, yeah, I guess the bigger Eventually, sports. Eventually, as, as the industry grows, yeah. If, you, if I don't know how much research you've done and stuff like this, but if you've seen, like, what, uh, like, professional, like, athletes, like, for, like, uh, NBA and NFL and mm -hmm. stuff, have, like, the most absolutely crazy support teams. Yeah, I bet. Like, support networks for every single thing that they do mm -hmm. in that department. Yeah. Eventually, the gaming gets big enough. That's what we'll have, and hopefully people will be able to have longer, better careers without hurting right. themselves. Uh, we kind of have a lot of nuance to things like that, as well as ergonomics. So yes, the yeah. The number of people that sit with their face right up to their screens. Uh. <laughs> well, most importantly, how much they can, you know, really 
<clears throat> invest their uh, their time into any esport that they choose. Uh, that, well. It's already a ton tons better than uh, you know, the Brood War days. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the. Bodies. I'm, I'm waiting for the documentary, the esports documentary, when we get to see someone do like a a ladder session and then they take the ice bath. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, it was a real tough day ladder, you know, but I'm just here cooling off, making sure the old tendons and ligaments are fine. That'll be the amazing. ice bath is uh, better, you know, it's better for the skin, wells, you know. But any day now. Any day. Oh, uh, well, it's a good thing that is on his, Tasteless is on his way there. Yeah? T Tastos has put themselves in cryo chambers every time they come out here for BlizzCon. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> That's what we have in the That's first the class career. He's like, my vocal cords are obliterated. <laughs> Cryogenically freezing myself is the only way to restore them for this guy. It's all becoming a little bit of Bane. It's not a joke, though. That's what he sounds like before he steps in. It is. Oh, we do have uh, Bane nests on the way for both parties, but already, a, I guess, a slight lead here for a laser, but he is now popping out those lings. And Rainer changing things up by going for yeah. plus one melee. One of the reasons that we really loved watching Rainer versus any other Zerg, especially Serral, is that there is such a diverse mix of builds and styles. Mm -hmm. This is going to look like a plus one missile for some time to a laser until he realizes, like, hey, there's no roach warren. There's, uh, there's no roaches at all. Nope. So when you make this investment into that early melee, of course, that money comes from other things that you could have been doing, you could have been trying to do in terms of getting units out. Things like Banelings, since it is going to cost you that minerals and the gas. ZBZ, very much so, very delicate balance of choices. More so than any of the other matchups due to the larvae mechanic. Yep, choosing whether to make army or drones, literally life or death. It's tough, but in this case, Rainer is choosing to go all lings, all army, down 10 drones, very much so on purpose. Now, he didn't go for plus one carapace, which we hopefully by this point all know means that you can take another bailing hit to the face, but still leaves your lings very, very weak. Instead, it's the plus one melee. So he's going to have to be still very careful against a laser's bailings. I'd say best case scenario for something like this is that they didn't go bailings at all. Yeah. That is something to... Uh, that's a little bit but reaching a, a, there to hope for. Yeah, a Zerg not building a Baneling Nest in ZVZ is just asking for it. So he's going to test the ramp. Gets uh, two of the Banelings there. Not bad. Gets a third one. And with plus one, worth noting, not only will the Lings win any head-to-head -head Zergling fight. This Queen Surround is insane, by the way. But they will also be able to just, you know, when you throw one or two Lings at the enemy Banelings, you're much more likely to be able to kill them. And somehow, a bunch of these Lings that have been hitting the Queens were able to do it for quite some time. And he's going <laughs> to try to go trade out. If you're really careful, two Banelings will kill any other Banelings within range of them. So Rainer says, all right, I've got to force one of Banes. As long as I can force this into a Ling versus Ling fight, my Lings will win because they have that plus one melee upgrade now. And a laser just has a single Baneling. I am not even sure where that is. It may not matter as Rainer is starting to rip and tear his way through the opposing forces. GG, that plus one melee attack. Nice, nice meme. Fairly quick 2-0. Um, not too surprising. I was literally saying before we, we you know, came live that <laughs> with Rainer it could go really short. Yes. Or it could go really long because they just both like, you know, ping pong back each game. But so far, all in Rainer's lead. A laser, it's it's just so difficult to if you don't know it's on the way to match the link count already is difficult, but then their links are inherently better. So yes. you really want to over prep banelings. You hopefully have Maybe even a couple extra uh, queens to help out target fire their banelings, making yours more effective. And he just wasn't, he didn't know about it. And it was a last second preparation. And I'm not really sure what else he could have done to make it too much better. His baneling control was okay. It just was not having enough banelings, it yeah, felt, it to, really. to make up for the loss of links he had. He lost two banelings to so like the first couple of ling pokes up the ramp. That's I true. Think. There, were, yeah. there, was some, there was some bane baiting that happened there that I think could have been handled a little bit better, but... I agree. It's a very, it's a very awkward position when you're not 100% sure that that's what your opponent is going for. Because from maybe a laser's perspective, he was thinking, "All right, I want to attack the third base." We saw the lings that he had early on, and then he sees that Rainer's building lings, and he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna back off now, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. drone and just, you know, take care of business while you're trying to you know, poke back." But he wasn't just poking back; he was he was swinging the bat yeah. about as hard as he could. Right. It's the, the next wave you're like, oh, this is actually a real attack, or when you finally click on the Ling to see that they, in fact, invested into the upgrade. And while that doesn't necessarily mean that it's like, you know, you didn't do that 30 seconds later, a minute later, even the five seconds later, 
that you know you could have had that information a little bit sooner can be a big deal, especially when you are capable of making more banelings. You just didn't think you really had to. And then, uh, you know, inevitably, if you can hold on just for a little bit longer, you start including roaches, hopefully get them, you know, their backs against each other. But even that isn't a, a foolproof way to deal with the mass links. They surround roaches and they kill them. Yep. Actually very, very well until you get a certain number. Yeah, with, with the upgrades, links just scale ridiculously, um, much like all the other small units that attack very quickly. Yep. It's a great design, though. Yeah, and it's it's a the unit interaction for all the small units. It's like that difference between like six or so hits for a zergling to kill another zergling, and it's just like boom, just take one off. Yearlings okay. will never lose a fight against the otherlings, and they need a really big numbers advantage to overcome the upgrade difference. But we're loaded in here for our potential final map of this series on our yes, lovely Tom Cruise eighty four. Yes. <laughs> what was the other name? Like Neo Tokyo or something? Does they have like a longer that name? That was. Or well, that's just a. It's just a copyrighted song name that couldn't be used as the uh, official okay, title okay. of the map. But yes, Neo Tokyo, which is a great, uh, great I mean, synthwave track. I, I was like, it's it's a great setting in Akira. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a twelve pool and uh, no gas. It seems. So. It was interesting to see the cheesiest builds come out on the one of the, the large maps, sure, but also with the fact that it has inhibitor zones in the middle to slow anything down. But that's kind of its its this trickery. This is a meme, by the way. It's fake. It's bait. Like this is the shortest rush distance map, even if you it's go through the slow zones. Yeah, the slow zones are more about I think air units that get caught. <laughs> And any sort of positional play that relies on it, like the 14 Barracks Mass Reaper, all in that we it's saw. It's shorter earlier. than New Repugnancy? That does surprise me. I always figured it wasn't as long as, stats, as you would feel, but... Yeah, when the stats came out about it, someone was like, it's still the shortest rush distance. It's more about this, like, this is the rush map, but it's meant to make you hesitate because of those zones. Right. But yeah. Well, the zones if, themselves are not actually that big, and while the slowdown is significant, it's... The distance between the bases is still natural and natural is like disgustingly short, so it doesn't it doesn't really have that big of an impact unless you get caught in the zone by your enemy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's when it's the worst, is when you're caught in there or running into tanks or something along those lines. It was seen by that first overlord, which uh, one of the downsides is the inhibitor zones, I guess for those flying units you're talking about is that it doesn't see as fast, perhaps, the natural, like how committed this is. But soon enough, you see that there's not really any more lings on the way. He is going to try and defend with the drone pool. The goal here is not to lose any drones, but then to buy time for your own lings to pop with a combination of a couple drones. You'll take care of it, keep your hatchery alive, and keep your drone Ooh, count ahead. Drones get caught. He, uh, he missed micro there for a second. Some of his drones are actually attacking the unbuildable plates at the bottom of the ramp. But then two more lings show up for Rainer and Elazer's uh, forces are... Coming a little bit questionable. Mm, Do not want to get caught in case the opponent was rallying more lings across the map, but now the queen is out and that will help. Yeah, it is. Join. His overlord eventually made it to that hatchery and saw that it was yeah. not super committed, plus didn't see any more lings. Actually a little too forward into that hatchery. It's gonna lose a lot of health to that queen. Yeah. That was a successful hold though. A laser again, a deal situation is you, you don't lose any drones, but that's a very hard thing to do. Ooh, that overlord got much weaker than I thought the it would. Only scenario when Zerg players are mad about the 40 Overlord speed buffs that have happened. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just losing two drones is also pretty good. He It means he did keep his drone lead, although, of course, he wasn't mining with it the entire time. And now the uh, lead is going to continue with five more drones popping out. Earlier evolution chamber for a laser really early. Are we looking towards the similar plus one to Rainer's last game? Rainer is not going for his own drones for a reason. He's going for a lot of lings. This time, no, they don't have speed. I no, was like, I just kind of assumed, speed. but he never got the gases, so he is just going to go for a slow ling all in. He seems to have, yeah, for some reason, he now believes that a slow ling all in is going to be enough, and he's not wrong. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. no speed or baneling nest for a laser. He's getting carapace, but he's, I mean, that upgrade takes a while, so, and now he starts ling speed, and all of these things actually, I guess, hurt him in the long run, right? Because he won't. This is so None bad. of it should be done by the time this attack hits, and he has no idea it's coming. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the one Overlord that was really on Rainer's side of the map was was clearly pushed off to the left, and while it maybe could have swung around, that's actually something that Rainer would have noticed with his own Overlords. But he doesn't even go through the middle of the map. He's going to keep it even more secret. 
So that middle Overlord of Elazer won't see it. It won't be until he's already on top of the third hatchery that the Lings will be revealed. And they're just, they're not even going to go after the third hatchery. They're going to go right for the natural. Oh my gosh. Slow Lings. Really. And he's, he's still not, he still doesn't have enough gas for speed. He only recently got that gas. He's going to go after the hatchery. It's oh low. He's going to go after it. Yo no whoa. way. No way. He gets it. Oh, oh no. I mean, you might see an attempt to baneling, you know, a couple of banelings on there when they follow up with an attack, or or with speedlings, they try and dart in and just, grab that low hatchery. But slow speedlings, slow, I, well, blah, I slow don't links. know how I feel about that. I, the Carapace I don't know upgrade's either. about to finish too, so the links for a laser will just be I, better. Rainer's not even going for a baneling nest again. The Carapace would mean that they negate one baneling, but they still get very, very weak afterwards, and hopefully, just have a second baneling available. No banelings for Rainer. <laughs> Just yeah. slowings here, but a decent number of them still. So, Rainer with the meme build. I don't know how I feel about it. These lings are gonna come up. They're gonna fight. It's gonna be awkward. The queens basically just hold, using their range trying to bully them back. Does pop a few transfuses, and I guess the effectiveness of this. I don't know how I feel because like he just moved the drone straight to the third that was about to finish. So it's not like his mining was delayed by too much. So Rainer does have the, the army supply advantage, even with the weaker Zerglings. So yeah, and at least he made them. I can feel Yoan Merlo warging into me to say, Luka D. Supai. And I'm like, okay, Yoan. Okay. He's got more army. He's not behind really on drones. Those are la last couple workers only just finished for a laser. Yeah. Yeah, I almost, watching the, that battle, I almost forgot the hatchery went down. It is finally. The fact he's getting so many Zerglings, and he's getting plus one melee as well. Yeah. So he's going to have one, one Speedlings versus nothing. No, nothing. Yeah. The Roach Horn is, no, he, I don't even know. He went for it, but then didn't actually go for it. Like, he made a couple of Roaches, and then now he's even making some Ravagers, but has stopped. He's just going to hope to have more links than his opponent, yeah. which does make up for upgrades. But with two upgrade lead, that's, mm, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. It's working. The, the roaches, it's okay, the, the roaches and the ravagers here definitely get more they, done. They actually, about that pathing. <laughs> they both spread creep so much that these queens are already back on creep. This is such a weird game. But Rainer has the army supply. He has links to cover his roaches as, as low a number as they are. Yeah. And they're even just like buying time here. Oh, okay, well now they should be surrounded. There we go. Around Ravager, it looks like it's about to get surrounded now, but the queens are here. Pulls the Ravager back. Uh, fighting with just the Lings versus the Lings is the one thing that Rainer does not want to do in this situation. Uh, I just, uh, looking at the- This is so weird. Looking at the numbers, by the way, on the panels, is, is the, this is a great example as to why it doesn't really matter. Those one-on-one upgrades just simply didn't matter. Although I guess you could say that it was all about the army supply. It certainly was. It, it ended up being better. Rainer protected his roaches as well, so kudos there, and he had his queens along for the ride, which is available because there was so much creep spread, and he's even getting his plus one melee himself. Like, that's... Yeah. This is a game. This was a game. This was a this, this was, was a, a game, game of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void, now available on PC and Macintosh. <laughs> Uh, but that is a 3-0 then. Uh, a laser's production has been camped. It doesn't matter that he has upgrades. He no longer has enough lings to get any surrounds. Uh, and Rainer is continuing to rally forward, continue his uh, lead behind. He's, he's actually still okay on the uh, economy. What a weird game. No army. Rainer no army takes for a laser. 3-0. What a weird, 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 weird game. Uh, what a weird game. I should respect slow lings more, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Your face. That was like the perfect face for like, should you though, without actually saying. Shit, you should do though. I mean, he came into his EVZ, and we got another one coming up next. But uh, I didn't. I guess, yeah. You know what? You were right. Yeah. Rainer's EVZ is somewhat entertaining. Yeah, they're top so, notch, man. Yeah, no, Rainer, Rainer's EVZ games are fun and weird. So Rainer wins! Hey, look at that! And suddenly the prophecy comes true. We're taking a look at our matches today. That's right, just one final series for Double Assist Europe Challenge. Are these guys trying to get us back on schedule? They are so nice. It's gonna be between. Cyril and Rainer. This was, frankly speaking, the matchup that you were waiting for tuning in today. It's coming up next. It'll be awesome.